Hello, friends, and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, we are now officially on day two of my quarantine from work. And except for the fact that I'm home today and not able to go to work for the next couple of weeks, it's been a big nothing burger. Um, still no symptoms of any, any problems, no uh, fever, no nothing like that. And uh, so, I don't know, I'm getting a little bored right now, or I gotta admit. Um, you know, I've been unemployed for so long now that I'm really kind of over being uh, unemployed. And uh, you'd think that, you know, if most people would say, oh, I got a two week paid vacation from work, that'd be great. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, and if this happened a year from now, you know, maybe it'd be a different story. But I don't know, I'm a little, little bit bored. And so we're trying to find ways to entertain myself. And um, it's kind of rainy today, so I'm kind of stuck inside the apartment uh, a bit. I did spend a bunch of time online uh, going through reading some uh, SOPs and doing some of the uh, paperwork that I have to do as a new employee. I filled out my W-4 form today. I signed up for my benefits. I signed up for direct deposit at work, of uh, my paycheck, and all that kind of fun stuff. But other than that, it's just been kind of a slow day today. I have tried going to the grocery store a couple times just to you know, see if, if the hoarding is starting to wind down a little bit. Uh, it isn't. Um, you still, the entire, the entire row of toilet paper is completely bare shelves. Uh, I'd like to buy some cans of soup. I really can't do that right now because, you know, you know, all they got is damaged cans and uh, the kinds of soup that nobody really wants. You know, cream of mushroom soup, hey, they got, got a little of that. But any of the regular kinds of soup, you know, you're just kind of out of luck. So, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait this out. And I think uh, eventually things will start returning to normal. You got to, you got to, you know, just imagine it from the grocery store point of view. All of a sudden, all of a sudden something goes on and people are just cleaning out the store. And you can only, rest you know, only re restock things so fast. And it isn't like a regional thing where you can just uh, import stuff from outside of the region that's affected affected and you know try and offset it you know this is something that's going on nationwide right now and so you know the warehouses they can only do so much the companies that manufacture the products they've only got so much of the product and it's going to take a little while for them to you know wind up a little bit and start producing more you know the toilet paper manufacturers only have so much toilet paper and they can make more but that takes a little time to happen so you know, whatever, um, I've got all the basic necessities of life. I'm halfway thinking about making another uh, batch of my uh, cream of mushroom and wild rice and chicken soup. Uh, just because I like to, you know, one, have something in the freezer that I can serve for food if I need it. And two, also uh, to find out how well the Instant Pot does for cooking wild rice. So, I don't know, we may do that in the next couple days or so just to see how that works. Like I said, it, uh, you know, when I did the recipe originally, it took 18 to 24 hours to just prepare the rice. And this Instant Pot says it does it a lot faster than that. So I'm very eager to see how well that works. And uh, I think that would be a great thing if I could reduce the time it takes to make this from, you know, 24 plus hours down to maybe an hour or two, that'd be really great. But uh, right now, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna play with that, play it by ear and see what happens. Um, one other thing, uh, when I left uh, California, right before I left, uh, my mom uh, gave me my father's laptop computer. She basically said, you know, I'm the only one that's gonna do anything with it anyway. And so I've been kind of digging through it and it's been kind of a treasure trove of uh, things that I've been really happy to find. Um, you know, for many, many years, my dad was always the photographer of family events. And uh, for years and years and years, you know, he would uh, either get uh, prints or make slides. And then he had a slide projector and, he'd, and every once in a while we'd pull it out and watch slides. Well, as slides became less and less common, uh, he decided a few years ago to take all of those slides that were taken up room in his closet, digitize them on his computer, and save them as JPEGs and then pass those photos out to my sister and myself. 
and other family members who would be interested. Well, I found the repository of all of those photos on his laptop. And it's kind of fun because while he was usually the person behind the camera, I've actually uncovered a few photos of, of him in front of the camera that he took on uh, vacations and stuff like that they went, they went on in previous years. I also found uh, you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos of my sister and her kids, uh, basically from the point they were born until about five years ago when my dad stopped using that laptop and moved to an iPad. So this has been kind of a fun thing to kind of dig through. It's kind of been a, just kind of a uh, scavenger hunt to see what I can find. You know, there's nothing really current or topical from a bookkeeping standpoint on there, you know, but like I said, this it's been fun finding a lot of these uh, old photos of my niece and nephew when they were when they were really really young when they were babies you know the whole thing so it's been really kind of fun doing that and uh, that's also helped me kind of kill a little bit of time today so I realized when I was kind of driving around and parking uh, in the last couple of days that I haven't really talked about these uh, plants that I brought with me these are the palm trees of course that you recall that I brought with me when I came to Texas and they seem to be doing all right they had kind of a a difficult year uh, over the summer uh, because I think they're kind of acclimating to the heat that's coming all coming along here but I also have my maple tree which is starting to bloom now it's starting to bud a little bit so I'm really kind of happy to see that because um, it had kind of a difficult year last year and this is the first real uh, cold winter it's ever had to deal with so the fact that it's bouncing back this year that is definitely good news. Uh, uh, it's, you know, usually one of the things that you run into with this thing is that the winters in California are usually pretty, pretty tame. So, you know, it ends up dropping its leaves in December and it's already starting to bloom in, you know, uh, February or March. Well, this one was a little bit longer and it ended up dropping its leaves last October and it's just now starting to get to the point where it's starting to bloom so it's definitely adapting to the new climate here and that is definitely a good thing I hope this thing continues to do well because I would really like to plant this in my new uh, yard in my house in a couple months and the fact that it's doing well and blooming or budding right now that is definitely a positive uh, development now unfortunately a couple of the other plants that I brought with me aren't maybe doing as well you may recall I brought a couple of plumeria with me and it looks like this one's dead so I'm probably not going to save that one. This one looks like it's doing okay though. It still feels pretty good and it's still kind of green at the top. It's going to take a little while for it to uh, to uh, start blooming or start uh, sprouting leaves because even, even when it was in California it was usually late summer before this thing started having leaves on it. You remember this is a tropical plant that's native to Hawaii. So, you know, it's not exactly used to the cold that can happen in California or the real cold that can happen here in Texas. But I am actually happy that this, at least one of these survived and, uh, you know, probably will survive to be put into the ground at some point. And of course my cactus isn't doing all that well either. I think I may end up uh, losing this at some point. You know, you'd think that the, uh, that the heat would be something that the cactus would thrive under, but I don't know, something, something tells me that it just didn't, it wasn't compatible with this one. So kind of a little disappointed that I lost that. I mean, I haven't completely lost it yet, but it doesn't really look that healthy. So I'm guessing I am in the verge of losing it and not really sure what to do. So probably just going to let it do its thing here. But that's sad, but you know what, I'll get another one at some point. I do know the cactuses do pretty well in Texas because I've seen a bunch of them around here. It may just be that this species doesn't do that well in the uh, extremes that can happen here. Now I gotta admit, this is a thing that I had the most fear that it wasn't going to do well. Because uh, this was that little clipping from that plant that my mom gave me decades and decades ago that basically took, took over my backyard. And basically I just brought this thing literally in a glass of water. Just took a couple of cuttings off of it and planted it in a glass of water and that's how I brought it to Texas with me. And I didn't even put it in soil until I got here. And 
you know, it continues to do well. In fact, I see, I'm just looking at this now, I see another leaf, uh, another little leaflet forming here on this one. So, you know, glad to say that this thing's going to probably make it also. This will always probably be an indoor plant because I'm not sure how well it'll deal with uh, some of the changes in temperature that can occur outside. But, uh, you know, it's good to know that I was able to keep this one alive. I was also a little bit excited to discover that one of my videos is starting to get pushed a little bit by YouTube. Uh, you may recall a couple months ago I did a three-part video on the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Now, you know, as, as you know, the original video, I just basically told the official story and uh, said that, you know, anyone who wants to talk about the conspiracy theories and all the opposing ideas about what happened are free to do so. Well, I've been noticing that I've been getting a lot of uh, comments coming off of those videos lately. And I started looking at the numbers and it looks like about 12 days ago, YouTube started pushing that, pushing one of those three videos, part three of the, of the video. I actually kind of wish they were pushing the, uh, the director's cut because that's the whole thing. But, uh, you know, I'll take what I can get. And uh, in the last uh, 12 days, I've gone from about 2,000 views to about 5,000 views. So that's really exciting. That's the first time that uh, YouTube has ever appeared to push one of my videos. So I'm very excited about that. I'm also kind of excited about the fact that I'm uh, maybe a day or two away from hitting the big 3,000 subscriber number. So uh, last time I checked uh, about an hour ago, I was at 2,990. So, and that's gone up uh, in the last uh, week or 10 days from about uh, you know 2800 or whatever and it's been going up for the last uh, month or two so I've been very happy about that uh, so I don't know keeping my fingers crossed you know it'd be nice to hit that 3000 uh, subscriber mark it isn't really anything except just kind of a milestone but uh, you know it's something I I never would have imagined uh, me having 3000 subscribers just a year ago when I started this so that's kind of exciting also so anyway, I think that's all that I have to talk about today. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.